Wake up. With Randy Corporan. I'm KLC. This is the podcast for Wake Up Wake with up. Randy Corporan. Listen to Wake Up with Randy Corporan live, live weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on KLZ AM 560 The Source or through our online stream at 560thesource.com. Share this podcast with your friends and be sure to like us at Facebook at Wake Up Wake with Randy Corporan. On KLZ AM 560 The Source. Well, yeah, here I am. I'm back. I'm ready. Whatever you got for me today, I'm ready. It's free for all Friday on the KLZ Morning Show. And uh, I have been invited to join Ken Clark this afternoon on Freedom 560. I'll be here at noon to talk about my my freedom, my release from the bondage of the Republican Party. I am now among the ranks of the unaffiliated, and so far it feels so good. And that is in spite of so many people having a very strong opinion on this. Got plenty of folks who are, you know, patting me on the back. Good job. I've been waiting for you to come on over to my side. And, and, you know, I understand that. I understand the feeling. Uh, Lots more people who are very, very concerned that people leaving the Republican Party leaves us exposed to four more years of John W. Hickenlooper, six more years of Mark Udall, And then all of the consequences down the food chain. And I understand each and every one of them. And I will not stop writing checks to people like Tony Sanchez or Laura Woods or Justin Everett or uh, go down the list. And I'm not omitting anybody by intentional thought. It just happens to be 5.08 in the morning. And what do you expect from a guy on a Friday anyway? But Ken Clark invited me on, so I will be on Freedom 560 with Ken back in studio. Be like the good old days when I used to have the wonderful opportunity to co-host Grassroots Radio when that was the only live and local original Liberty program right here on KLZ. And, of course, now Chris Cook has that handily under control. I love the Liberty lineup around here on KLZ. I love the fact that nobody has come to me, you know, and from management or... The other shows, well, except for John Rush. John, you're dead to me. But um, nobody else has come and said, what are you doing? Man, we've got an election we've got to win. It's time to giddy up, saddle up, get on board. People are respecting the decision. People are trying to understand the decision. It's not sour grapes because Tom Tancredo didn't win. It's got nothing to do with that. And, you know, happy to talk about it if you'd like. Free for all Friday, 303-477-5600. 477-5600 is the number. But since I'll be here at noon with Ken Clark and we'll be talking about it then, I thought perhaps it was time to move on. This is not about me. I had to do what my heart and that deep kind of sick, strong feeling in my gut told me that I had to do on Tuesday night as I waited for Republican leadership at any level, a state level, I mean, Mark Baisley is the only one who came out and called for an investigation, and even he has had to backpedal. We really learned and saw how Mark Baisley felt. If you want to find out for yourself, go to our Facebook page and see the picture of me and Mark Baisley in studio yesterday morning after the show. The dude got a little worked up. That's all I can say. Our Facebook page is Wake Up with Randy Corp. and been so many comments sent to me by private message, by text message, my cell phone numbers, public knowledge, 303-885-2550 if you want to text me. If you want to communicate with me on Facebook directly, one-on-one, just go to my Facebook page, my personal page, Randy Corcoran, and send me a friend request. If you exist, if you're not a troll, if you're not some... Uh, so, <laughs> you wouldn't believe some of the friend, you probably get this too, some of the friend requests that come across um, from, let's just say, certain types of women or um, certain types of 
well, uh, you know what? I'm not going to go there. I, it's too early. I don't want to get overly serious today, even though there are so many serious things to talk about. And in fact, there's no way to avoid it because there is a major, major event going on today. And that is, we thought, we hoped, we prayed. You may have heard the KLZ call to action yesterday that our, uh, Zach let me record in the morning and we've had it up on the show all day long yesterday saying, call your representatives in the House of Representatives. Call Congress. Send emails. Mark Baisley says the emails are even more effective because Congress, uh, the Congress staffers can share them and send them out and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, especially if you send them to somebody who shares your opinion and it's artfully stated, succinct, don't write them a book. They're not going to read a book. You ever have that happen? You get a text message and you open it up and the thing is like, you know, four paragraphs long. <laughs> I, I, if you want to tell me that much, let's have a conversation, you know, but send them a, an email today. Make a phone call today. We have to keep up the pressure because I had hoped and prayed that Congress would be off its merry way on vacation for five whole weeks. No more damage could be done, at least by Congress. But no, John Boehner had to uh, have a little temper tantrum. Kevin McCarthy said, there's time for another vote. Don't, don't go away. We understand what you think. We understand what the people want. But don't go away. We've got to get something done on immigration before we go. I have an idea. Why don't you focus your energies on getting this president, forcing this president to uphold the law? How about that? You are the House of Representatives. You have the power of the purse strings. You should be passing bills to defund programs that are favored by this president, and you should do it right and, oh, no, 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 we'll be accused of shutting down Programs that help people will be accused of shutting down the government again. It's almost election time. We can't do that anymore. The press won't like us. No, we can't talk about impeachment. We can't talk about impeachment of the president because that's bad politics. You know what, my Republican friends, my former Republican brothers, the press and the Democrats are treating you as though you were impeaching the president anyway. They are fundraising off of the made-up threat of impeachment, even though John Boehner has come out and said, we're not going there. And I'm, I'm torn on this issue. I am really torn on this issue. 303-477-5600, uh, if you have a thought. And here's why I'm torn. I get you cannot impeach a president successfully. You can't actually remove him from office if you don't have sufficient numbers in the Senate. And we're not even close in the Senate. We won't be after November. Very doubtful we'd have sufficient numbers to actually sustain an impeachment. Possible, though, that if the Republicans do take over and the country sends a wave, a wave election kind of message to some of these Democrat activities, that certain Democrats who are having to fight for their seats in 2016 might realize, and they might themselves realize, that the kind of power that this president has amassed to himself has taken without consequence so far, if in the hands of a Republican, will then be turned around and used against them. So it's not a party issue to stop the executive branch from overstepping its constitutional bounds. It's a separation of powers. It's a three branches of government issue that both parties should be very, very concerned about. But I'm, I'm guessing that there are a lot of Democrats that see the demographics in the country, they see the feckless and weak nature of the Republican Party and pushing back against them, and they think, man, we are not going to lose another election. Let's grab enough power for our commander-in-chief, our imperial president, as we possibly can. So what do you do? What do you do today on Friday, first day of August, 95 days until Election Day? What do you do to make a difference today? If you've been listening to the show, you know how much Zach and I look forward to the weekends now. He, he gets in here early, finishes jo his job uh, during the day at KLZ. I get on the elevator, go downstairs to the law offices of me. And uh, often work till 6, 7 o'clock. I'm listening to grassroots radio as I get into the car. And uh, so by the time the weekend rolls around and knowing that um, no 3 a.m. No alarms are going to uh, disturb my beauty rest, and <laughs> Lord knows I need a lot of that, um, yeah, 
it's nice to see the weekend. So I'm glad that Zach is bringing you some sun. I thought maybe the liberty movement could bring us some protection in Congress, get a decent uh, exit strategy for Congress on this immigration bill. Looked like it was working yesterday. Uh, But Boehner and McCarthy, they're still scrambling to have their way. So we'll talk about what we need to do about it when we come back. 517 KLZ Morning Show, 303-477-5600. If you'd like to check in, good morning. It's KLZ 560. Thank God it's... Thank God it's... You got to admit, I do that pretty good. Maybe next time I'll do the uh, female backups there. (laughs) (sighs) Yes, I was an English major. I know the proper phrases. You have to admit, I do that pretty well. Okay, leave me alone, people. Everybody's a critic. That's all I can say. You know, if you want to criticize my decision to become an unaffiliated, an unaffiliated voter in Colorado on Tuesday, then, you know... Please feel free. 303-477-5600. I'm reading the texts. I see the Facebook messages. It's all fine. I'm not going to talk about it unless you want to call in. It's free for all Friday. You pick them. I'll play them. And if you want to talk about me some more, fine. Go ahead and call. But we did it for two days. I'm going to be back on the air with uh, Ken Clark on Freedom 560 at noon today. So we'll hash it out a little bit more. Be glad to take your calls then. Uh, I get so many of the arguments, you know, you can't pack up your toys and go home. I'm not crying because Tom Tancredo uh, lost. Uh, people lose elections. There's, it's, it goes much, much deeper than that. And we'll, we'll get into that at noon with Ken Clark. Uh, but if you want to direct your energies my way about this issue, then you have to pick up the phone. 303-477-5600. I think we've got more important things to do today, and it does involve... Uh, communicating with our brothers and sisters, or my former brothers and sisters in the GOP, in the House of Representatives, this uh, immigration bill that John Boehner and Kevin McCarthy are just bound and determined to figure out a way to pass is not dead yet. And uh, I understand from the reading I did last night and just looking around that the call to action, and I'm not saying that KLZ is responsible for this. This call of action, call to action has been going all around the country. Tea Party Patriots, one of the larger groups that I'm affiliated with, certainly has been behind this as well. Uh, people need to pick up the mantle today. And even if you called yesterday, they don't know who you are. Call again today. Take five minutes. Call the White House. Take another two or three minutes and write an email. And then blind copy it to a bunch of Congress critters that simply says no Boehner border bill without a repeal or stopping DACA, the uh, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals bill. That's the mechanism by which Barack Obama is using his pen, didn't even need his cell phone for this one, just using his pen to threaten to give amnesty to up to a million people with the sweep of a pen. It's a bad idea. If the Republicans are insistent on passing, we got to do something. We can't go home and meet our constituents and not have done something. You know what? If you're in government doing nothing, stopping bad legislation, putting up firewalls and roadblocks against an out-of-control president, an out-of-control Democrat Senate, that's doing something. That's doing the important work that the minority party can do to stand in the way. Do you recall, Republicans, that we, the Tea Party movement, the liberty activists from all around the country who got up off of our couches after the financial meltdown, shocked and stunned and frightened by the kind of spending put forth by George W. Bush, and then put on steroids by Barack Obama, the musings by a president of the United States that I have to violate free market principles in order to save the free market. That got us going. Obamacare was frightening. And the issues, the the machinations, the backroom deals, the bribery, Nebraska, the Cornhusker kickback. Remember all the little isms that we had during the passing of Obamacare? Woke people up. And we sent you 
majorities, vast majorities, historic, not the greatest number in history, but historic numbers of conservatives and liberty activists to the House of Representatives to stand in the way of this president. We did not send these people there because they have to do something. No, sometimes doing something means stopping the other guy from doing what is wrong. Bill Crystal's a regular guest on the morning show, and I know we'll have him back as we lead up to the elections in November of 2014, just 95 days away. And here's what he said to the House GOP. And, you know, a lot of people, oh, he's a neocon, he's a, another establishment, Beltway conservative. No, I don't get that from Bill Crystal at all. I've had some good conversations with him, some on air, uh, some off. This is a guy who has been in those trenches for a long time, who puts a lot of thought into uh, the things that he says, the things that he does. I don't agree with him all the time. I think when you live in that morass around Washington, D.C., that you really get a tainted vision of life in the rest of the country. And so it can influence some of the ways that you think. On the other hand, when you live in the middle of that morass, you know far better than people on the outside looking in what is happening. So you have to give people their due. And Bill Crystal says this, the House Republican leadership is having trouble getting 218 votes for its immigration bill. This was yesterday. This was before the calls to action from around the country when we flooded Congress with calls and emails. Did you? Did you make a call? Did you send an email? I Please, please, if you didn't, find five minutes, just real quick, you know, shave a little faster, get dressed a little faster. Get the curlers out of your hair a little sooner. Sit down at your computer and do it. Washington, D.C. will be open for business. I'm sorry. I know. Get ready. Watch your wallet. We'll be open for business in 33 minutes. Give them a call. Go to our Facebook uh, page. Wake, okay. I think I know what it's called. Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. We've got links there that will give you email addresses, give you the phone number to the White House. Take you five minutes to make a huge difference. Phone lines need to flood. Email boxes need to overflow because they're back. John Boehner, the Boehner border bill, Kevin McCarthy, got to do something. Got to do something. Well, Bill Crystal says, no, you don't. The policy objections to the bill seem convincing to him. Among them, that it seems to appropriate more money on a prorated monthly basis than the president's proposal. Great job, John Boehner. Great job writing that bill. Let's grab more. You're the House of Representatives supposed to rein in government spending. You want to appropriate more money than the president's proposal. Fine work. It might well make it harder, not easier, to send some or all of the illegal migrants back. Good. I I love that provision, John. Johnny Boehner, thank you, sir. It changes the asylum laws in ways that might well backfire. In other words, it's ill-conceived. It will likely be poorly executed. Why would you send this president any legislation at all that helps him further his agenda in any way, shape, or form when you know he will enforce the provisions that he wants, change the ones that he doesn't like, and simply ignore the ones that stand in his way? Why? And it doesn't deal in any way with the core cause of the problem, and that's DACA, the president's 2012 executive amnesty for minors, or his pending huge expansion of that amnesty, uh, which is under DACA. And I get it. Don't start with me. George W. Bush passed DACA. Different situation, dealing with refugee children. Dumb move in my book at the time, but what else is new? Not the point. This president, his lawyers, his minions find every which way they can to further their agenda and expand their own power. And we need a Republican Congress to stand up and stand in their way. Absolutely have to do it. These objections haven't been convincingly addressed by leadership. That's Bill Crystal saying this. And of course, there's been no markup of the leadership bill, no hearings about it. Oh, we're going to put it up on the website for 48 hours. Let everybody to look at it. Most transparent Republican House of... Ugh. I just want to throw up. No amendments permitted to this bill. All of this is grounds for not rushing to pass dubious legislation. 
the House Republican leadership should pull this bill. They're not going to do it unless you make them. So get on the phones, get on the email, go to our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Spend five minutes today. It's all it will take to make one call, send one blast email. There are websites and links, and I didn't go find one. We're not going to spend time doing it this morning, where you can get all of your Congress critters, not just yours, not just Colorado's, but all of them, uh, all of the emails, cut and paste them into one huge BCC so they don't know that you've sent it out as a blast email. Uh, Go to Tea Party Patriots. They've got uh, links to connect directly with specific legislators. Tea Party Patriots can help you. There's just so many different ways to do it. You can start right there on our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corpin. But it is critical. This bill has to die. 303-477-5600, the number. We'll continue to talk about this and what's wrong with it. Why is Republican leadership in the House once again trying to marginalize Senator Ted Cruz this time around the issue of immigration? I've got my thoughts. I'll share them with you next. I almost said Ken Clark because I'll be on Freedom 560 this afternoon. But your name is Zach Pugh. You've got thoughts on traffic and weather. Yeah, I'm a little easier to approach than Ken Clark. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and a little calmer, I understand. Yes, yes. What What was it that John Rush and John, you're dead to me, said yesterday on his show something about, you know, Randy and Ken. They, they get a little more worked up than I do. I'm... Uh, I'm uh, the rush to reason. He calls it uh, reason for the regular guy. Or well, you... I'd I'd like to say I think that's a that that's a lie. John has gotten <laughs> worked up a few say. times on his show here recently. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, John Rush show the Rush to Reason show is absolutely fantastic, and he's I think he's in Hawaii still, so he's been broadcasting remotely. So we really haven't had a chance to talk about this decision. But, uh, you know, he had some very valid points on the show yesterday, and he presented them well. And nonetheless, John Rush, you are dead to me. (laughs) There's one overwhelming reason to kill this immigration bill. One simple, absolute truth why this bill has to be killed. But it won't be if you don't get on the phone, don't get on your computer and send emails. They are fighting to find a way to shove this down your throat. One reason it ought to be killed anyway, I'll share it with you next. 533 KLZ Morning Show, 303 477 5600. See you on the other side. It's KLZ 560. Yeah, well, maybe not so much. You should be looking at my Facebook page. <laughs> really, Jerry, no. No, not a coward. Didn't pack up my toys to go home. If you want to talk about my decision to withdraw from the Republican Party, to join the ranks of the unaffiliated, it's very easy, 303-477-5600. I'm not going there on Facebook and text messages. I'm just not going there. I will be with Ken Clark on Freedom 560 at noon today, and we'll talk about that decision again. And I don't know Ken's take on it. I uh, saw Ken briefly yesterday. He did a quick favor for me at my law firm, which was pretty cool, but... uh, um, but we didn't talk about today other than, hey, you're going to be there? Yeah, I'm going to be there. Okay. All right. Well, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Good. <laughs> We're all out of here. John Rush, of course, is dead to me. But other than that, I still like all of the other Liberty lovers right here on KLZ 560. And uh, uh, by the way, I don't know if you heard the news. Speaking of uh, losing friends, and you all know I'm kidding about John Rush. We, uh, uh, we're not... Close, haven't known him that long, but I admire and respect and I've had some good conversations with him and just love that he's part of the KLZ team as much as I love being a part of it myself. And uh, But Jason Lewis is done. Jason Lewis wrapped up his show uh, last night. And uh, there's speculation, going to run for office, going to turn his full attentions to this Galt.io thing that he's got going on. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I love the replacement. Hate to see Jason go. Love the replacement. Dana Lash. Dana Lash, the newest addition to the KLZ 560 crew. It will air after Grassroots Radio Colorado. Does she start tonight, Zach, or start on Monday? She starts tonight. As okay. As far as I know. I, I've never heard her show. I've I, seen her, her. She has a TV show on the Blaze TV, and that's where I know her from. Okay. Well, I I certainly read stuff that she's written. I've seen her on other channels, and I've uh, follow her on Twitter. So uh, we'll see things that get blasted, and 
you know, she gets the classic attacks from the left. Conservative women, black conservatives are fair game for for the left as far as they're concerned. Uh, their sexuality, if they're too pretty, if they're... Uh, if they're outspoken, then they're just dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. I, it's on and on and on, you know. And so that ought to be a great addition to KLZ 560. Really looking forward to tuning into that. And uh, since it's Friday, Grassroots Radio Colorado does their happy hour, followed by uh, a full hour with Professor Tom Cranowitter with his um, snippets of the Constitution. I mean, this guy in an hour can teach you more than you could read, than you could speed read in an hour yourself, and makes it so entertaining. He was one of the, and continues to be one of the great instructors at Leadership Program of the Rockies, and uh, always looked forward to when he was coming in to handle one of the lectures. He's become a friend as well, but, you know, it's such a great, it's such great fortune for me to be in the situation I'm in, having gone through LPR, being the chairman of the Arapaho Tea Party, being deeply involved in Republican politics and in taking on the left, and now having the morning show on KLZ because um, I've just had such so many opportunities to expand the circle of great thinkers and great talkers and great persuaders, uh, expand that circle of influence by getting involved with these great minds. And so... Wow, I, I just I understand a lot of people are mad about uh, this Republican Party thing. No, election is ninety five days away. What the heck are you doing? And we'll talk about that more with Ken Clark at noon today. But it, it really doesn't change anything, does it? Have you heard any change in my tone and tenor since stepping out of the Republican Party? My little protest move against the Republican Party. Have you seen any difference in me? Did I not? Go after strongly bad Republican moves, bad Republican tactics? Did I not always continue to acknowledge that it is the Republican Party, the only vehicle we have with which to defeat the progressive left before I became unaffiliated as compared to now? Of course, there's nothing that's changed. I'll be there for the Rappo Tea Party meetings. I'll be here at 5 o'clock in the morning every day as long as they let me. Uh, This is a lifetime commitment to me, a lifetime commitment to salvage the freedoms and the limited government principles, the free market economics that caused this country to become so great so fast and do so much good for so many people all around the world. I'm not walking away from any of that. So some of the Facebook messages that I'm receiving are uh, just simply out of line. Right now, we're keeping, we got to keep a leash on John Boehner and Kevin McCarthy. I understand they're in leadership. They've got to stick together. They've got to, if they think this is the right thing to do, they've got to try and persuade people. They are absolutely wrong. And your job today is to flood the White House switchboard, flood the Capitol switchboard, and flood email boxes of Congress critters all around the country. We'll take you five minutes today to keep up the pressure. You've, this is how you send support to those Tea Party patriots, those liberty activists that we elected in 2010, that we reelected or replaced or, or continued uh, to support in 2012. The way you show their support is let them know that there are millions of us out here who believe in what they're doing to stop bad bills. We talked about in the last segment Bill Crystal's view of why this immigration bill that John Boehner has got to support, has got to try and get passed before we go on our five-week vacation. We've got to do something. I can think of a thousand things you could be doing, John, but the top on the list is go home. Go home. You have a va- five-week vacation. Go home. Bill Crystal hits it right out of the park. But the overwhelming reason to kill the bill is that it's not going to become law anyway. Why are you using political capital and energy and insulting Ted Cruz and Michelle Bachman and others who have been down to the border, who see what's going on, who've watched what this president does and doesn't do? He enforces by decree, by his own whim, The president and Senate leadership have made it clear they'll never accept this bill. 
It will never become law. Why waste your energy and your political capital and agitate your base, the people who sent you those majorities that give you power in the House of Representatives anyway? Why are you wasting your time, John Boehner? It's a really good article by Bill Crystal. We'll uh, talk about it more when we come back. We've linked up to it on our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, where if you go there real quick, in two minutes, you'll have the emails you need, the phone number you need to take action today to stop the Boehner border bill. Love in the weekend. I've got a traffic update. What kind of traffic? A real traffic update on my way into work. The uh, on-ramp, 225. The uh, Let's see. I'm new at this traffic stuff. The on-ramp from Parker onto northbound 225 is closed for construction. There are barriers up, massive trucks. Cops are there with their lights shining. So uh, people in our area around here need to know about that. You ain't getting on 225 northbound from Parker. Don't hey, do look, it. that one was just posted like Did two they? minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> I scooped them. I All scooped right. the traffic guys. <laughs> very, very cool. All right, it's 546. We'll keep talking about this immigration bill for a while. Uh, the impeachment mantra has been out and about. The um, fee for all Friday means if there's something else on your mind, we're ready to go. 303-477-5600, the number. And at 730, really looking forward to John Fund coming in to talk about his new book, Exposing the Evil Behind Eric Holder. So, good show ahead. Glad you're with us at 547. It's the morning show. Wake up with Randy Corcoran on KLZ 560. Don't call us. That's a good song to play for the Republican Party <laughs> and my relationship with them at the moment. But that's not a good song to play for a talk radio show in the early morning here on KLZ 560. Because well, well, I was, I was I ta- you know, call <laughs> to put a stop to uh, the immigration. Daca. Daca. Yes, yes, yes. No, I get it. I get it. And it's a great song. I love it. Anyway, Zach Pugh is here. I'm Randy Corcoran. It's the morning show. Wake up with Randy Corcoran on KLZ 560. Zach, you were uh, looking around on our Facebook page at the links that we put up yesterday to help people get in touch with Congress, make phone calls, send emails to stop this Boehner border bill. What did you find? Oh, well, you go to the Red State article and you just enter. It's really simple. You just enter in your zip code and it pulls up who you need to be contacting whose office. And not only that, it gives you about four or five talking points, uh, just real brief that you can use. So you don't even really have to worry about, you know, putting together a coherent sentence. It's already right there for you. Just make the phone call. Yeah. And just run through a couple yeah. of those points. Cut and paste. And if they see it, they'll know that people are organized in their thought processes. And, uh, and you know, it may be true that the establishment Republicans are not listening to you, but they, they know there is strength in numbers. And what you're really doing is supporting up those liberty-minded activists who got themselves elected to Congress thanks to your efforts from right here in Colorado. I don't know about you, but I supported people from all over the country since 2010, uh, the right candidates, people who stood for something, some who didn't win, but some who did. And this is how you send those reinforcements. Boehner wants to divide this into two pieces. He wants to give the president more money than he's asking for, get that passed. That's the border fix. Then he promises we'll work on a second bill to defund Obama's Deferred Action for Child Arrivals program. Sorry, I know it was George W. Bush's program, but it was designed for a different purpose. It's Obama's now because, like everything else in this Obama administration, he takes it over, he picks and chooses, he enforces it the way he feels like, rewrites it, changes deadlines in Obamacare. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There has to be one bill. If there's one bill that's going to come out of the House, it has to prohibit Obama from using future executive action to legalize millions of illegal aliens. It has to defund DACA. It has to shut down Obama's previous executive orders. That's what got this nightmare started. It's got to wipe out his authority to stop the deportation of certain immigrants in the country. He can't do that. It's illegal for him to do that. The House needs to say so. That will motivate your base, John Boehner. These midterms are base elections. It's the base that turns out in the midterms. 
and makes the difference. That's why 2010 was a Republican wave year. If you want a Republican wave in 2014, John Boehner, then think about your base. Not what CNN is going to say about you. Not what MSNBC is going to say about you. Don't you get it, John Boehner? You're impeaching the president, didn't you hear? It's all over the news. NBC, ABC, CBS, MSLSD, CNN, everybody is fine. MSNBC, Bob Duco said this this morning. In the, I don't remember if it was in the last month or the last week or whatever. It was 400 times the word impeachment got said on that station in a 24-hour period. 24, what? That's about eight times an hour. That's every couple of minutes or more. It's unbelievable. It, all right. Look, Republicans, the media doesn't like you. The media is never going to like you. Your friends are the people that are listening to this show right now. The people who will support you when you do the right things. The people who will send money to candidates and make phone calls and knock on doors. Stop waiting for the media to love you. It's never going to happen. Instead, stand up for what you believe, what you know is right, and make the case time after time after time. Forget the New York Times. Forget the Denver Post. Make the case time after time after time. That's what Ronald Reagan did. He didn't change his principles because the Republican establishment said that he was dangerous, he couldn't win, he was too extreme. Didn't change a thing. He just continued on message, the happy warrior, big smile on his face. Look, I've got a big smile on my face. Look. Oh, wait. Well, you know, I'm just telling you, I do. This border bill has to be killed. And Bill Crystal <laughs> nails it. Why are you wasting so much time on this when it's never going to become law anyway? If you want to get brownie points, then pass the bill that Ted Cruz wants you to pass. Go ahead and fund some humanitarian aid down there, some resources, some facilities. But put in these other provisions that we just talked about so that illegal aliens, including children from Central America, are treated the same as those from Mexico or Canada. This exception is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You're telegraphing. Come to America. It's free. Get your EBT card. Get your free plane ride to Minneapolis. Then we'll get you on a bus, get you to Walmart, get you your clothes and your school bag. And Really, stand up and say no. Go to our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. There are easy links there. Zach just talked about it. You go to the Red State link. They've got talking points. You can cut and paste them into an email, blind copy it to 10, 15, 20, 30. If you can find a list, send it to 100. I, I don't care. Do something. Take action. Make one phone call today. I prefer two. Make one to the White House, one to the Capitol. Say no on this amnesty bill. John Boehner, it's never going to pass anyway. But today's the day. They are bound and determined. Kevin McCarthy. And John Boehner are bound and determined. We've got to get something done. We can't go on vacation without fixing the border crisis. Really? You're going to fix the border crisis? If you want to fix anything, then shut down this president, John Boehner. Shut him down. Now, I get the lawsuit. I haven't read the lawsuit. I haven't looked very carefully or closely at what they're trying to do. Maybe it's a good first step. I understand the politics around not impeaching this president. They believe that uh, public sentiment is not on their side. We can't accomplish it anyway. We don't have the Senate, so it's never going to happen. Impeachment is not going to remove this president. But what's happening anyway, John Boehner? It doesn't matter how close, how clearly you say it. The press, the president, the president's press secretary are all ginning up a million dollars in one day. They generated off of the threat of an impeachment from this Congress, even though you've said you're not going to do it. So you're paying the price anyway. So why not just execute the power and the authority that the Constitution gives you? 
Hey, it's Randy Corcoran. Thanks for listening to the podcast of our show, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Don't forget, I'm chairman of the Arapahoe County Tea Party. Our meetings are the second Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. with candidates, elected officials, and topics of interest to freedom lovers everywhere. No matter where you're listening, please find us on Facebook and Google the Arapahoe Tea Party. Welcome back, KLZ Morning Show, 7 minutes after 6 o'clock, your Friday edition, free-for-all Friday, which means you pick them out, play them. Anything that's on your mind is fair game on Friday. 303-477-5600 is the number, 477-5600. 7.30, really looking forward to talking to John Fund. He's got a new book out that exposes Eric Holder. I've uh, thumbed through it a little bit. I love Amazon because you can actually look into books before you... Um, you know, decide whether or not you want to buy them. And John Fund, a great interview. First time on the morning show, be with us at 7.30. Uh, typically on Fridays, we hear from Derek Wilburn from American Conservatives of Color. That'll be in the 7 o'clock hour as well. But right now at 6.07, we got lots of time to talk about anything at all that's on your mind. Been a lot of buzz. I thought about not going public with it, and then I thought, are you kidding me? Of course I want to go public with my decision to withdraw from the Republican Party, join the ranks of the unaffiliated. And uh, so you can imagine the pushback, the uh, calls to the woodshed, the accusations, and the support. A lot more support, by the way, than resistance. The resistance comes mostly from higher up the Republican food chain. And I, I understand uh, a lot of people who've made an awful lot of good points to me. Nonetheless, my decision, I'm sticking to it. It could change, but I've got to see something. The Republican Party has to earn my vote. It has to earn my support, and it's sure not doing it right now in Congress as John Boehner and Kevin McCarthy scramble to pass a ridiculous so-called fix to the immigration crisis down on the southern border, a bill that will never become law. No way. The Senate will kill it. The president won't sign it. Why are they wasting their time? Anyway, Brad in Lakewood's been holding a good long time. He's got a comment about my party switch. If you are a regular all-day-long KLZ listener like I try to be when I'm not in court, then be sure and join Ken Clark and me at noon when I'll come on um, 560, Freedom 560. That's Ken's new show from noon to 2. We'll be together at noon to talk more about this switch. But, Brad, really glad you called in. What's on your mind? Um, I, I agree with what you're doing. As a matter of fact, I did, I did that once before myself. But I find another way that I can get my point across is I like to stay a registered member because then I get letters from them all the time. And then whether it's Jerry Moran or uh, Rob Portman, I just mail it back to their office and tell them why I'm not going to send them any money. And I don't think it accomplishes a whole lot. But if they get enough of these letters back telling them I'm not going to send any money, uh, I think that's also equally as effective. Well, and I have definitely done that. I especially love when they send you the stamp. Here's your stamp or here's a dollar bill. You know, please fill out this survey and then send us $1,000. I love taking the dollar, using their stamp, writing on there, not sending money to party, read the Constitution or something like that and sending it back. I just love doing that as well. And, and Brad, um, you've called in before. We've been almost silent on what's happening in Mississippi, but you've got your ear on the ground out there. What's going on right now with Chris McDaniel? Well, it's been kind of quiet, but every day it seems something new pops up. And I hate to, I got an interesting article yesterday, and I, I hate to repeat information across the radio unless I'm 100% effective. But Well, you know what? It, it's fair to do it as long as you give that caveat, if you give that warning. So, um, you, if, if I understood it correctly, yeah. there's some... There were some 2002-2012 uh, rules changes, and according to these rule changes, if Cochran accepts a nomination, he can't accept the 35 to 40,000 Democrats. Uh, it would be illegal for him to accept the, the votes that came across from the Democrat side of the aisle. I, I, I'm sure hmm. I got that a little mixed up, but evidently the sources were uh, seemed pretty correct, and uh, they did they did list uh, the the numbers and stuff, but. He he accept he accepted the nomination, but according to that, then he, it's not legal for him to accept the nomination if he accepts the thirty-five to forty thousand Democratic votes that that came out of the national the two thousand twelve rules change. 
So, well, but evidently, what would that mean, though? Would that then nullify his victory in the Republican runoff in Mississippi, or what does that mean? Do we do we know what how that would actually apply? I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, got, I didn't get a chance to read the whole okay. whole article, but it sounds to me like they're so crooked down there that the Mississippi Republicans will say, "Yeah, we know it's illegal, but we're going to do it anyways. We don't care." Well, we've certainly seen evidence that uh, when it comes to higher up Republican politics and Republican organizations, that the desire to win supersedes anything and everything else. And uh, that was certainly a big influence on my decision to withdraw my support, my affiliation with the Republican Party. Uh, but you know, I'll tell you what, Brad. If you over the weekend learn anything, I just uh, I'm just hanging on for dear life, waiting to see if Chris McDaniel can find some way to upset that Mississippi apple cart and show these establishment, the Mitch McConnells who raised eight hundred thousand dollars in one night for Thad Cochran, the people who are circling the wagons around a forty year senator who clearly mentally has started to lose it. You just listen to him and look at him and, and watch him try and act and speak. Um, I would love to see that apple cart upset. That would go right up at the top of my list with the defeat of Eric Cantor, thanks to our good friend Christopher Doss. Well, I'm getting ready to call all four of my Colorado representatives, but I did call the Republican National Committee, and I asked her why Ryan's Priebus wasn't getting involved in Mississippi, and she was decent enough to have talked to me, but she says he can't get involved for legal purposes. But I, I don't know if that's true or not, but she did take the time to talk to me, but... And then I called the National Republican Senate Committee and asked them what was going on, and all they did was tell me to call the RNC. Huh. So, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's just classic. Circle the wagons. I can't talk about this. There's pending litigation. I can't yeah, that, comment. That's, yeah. that's what they told me in the RNC. They said it was, it was, it was, it's in court and they can't comment. Hmm. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem like it's ever stopped him from commenting before. When Todd Aiken put his foot in his mouth and created that firestorm, Saw no no issue with the uh, anybody in the RNC and the Carl Roves and all the big time Republicans coming out to slaughter that guy. So I you know I don't know I don't know all the details. So I guess I won't go too far either. You said you're calling um, four people in Colorado, four uh, representatives here in Colorado. Yeah, Are you Lam- talking? I'm going to call Lamborn, Tipton, Tipton, and Coffton and Mike Kaufman. There's uh, no sense about the border bill. Yeah, beg your pardon. About the border bill. Yeah. Okay. Good. And I'm, and one thing you got to ask him is why was John Boehner renominated as speaker? I mean, the guy proved himself to be the worst speaker of the House in the history of the Republican Party, and they reelect him. And then they, after we knocked out Canner and vote him out, they put in somebody even far more liberal than Canner. That's Kevin McCarthy. Well, yeah, I don't know if he's more liberal necessarily than Eric Cantor, but he was certainly the next establishment guy in line, wasn't he? Yes, and, and we had good people like down there like Louis Gomart or Steve Stockman, Michelle Bachman, Steve King. Why couldn't they get somebody good to run? Yeah. Now it's very frustrating, and they did it so quickly, too. There was really no time for the one guy, uh, I forget his name. Raul Hispanic, Labrador. Labrador, yes, who was uh, kind of rose quickly to the top as the opposition, but there's very little time for him to mount an assault. Uh, it's just politics as usual. One of the reasons that we have to continue to fight, continue to put our constitutional conservative candidates on the line and our constitutional conservative values on the line to win this battle. And Brad, I really appreciate the call. Thanks for keeping an eye on Mississippi as well. Thanks for your support in my own individual decision with regard to the Republican Party, and I hope you have a great weekend. All right, Brad and Lakewood, a lot of information there. Very, very interesting. Keeping our eye on Mississippi. We also need to keep our eye on Kansas. They have their primary um, next week. August the 6th, is it? I don't think it's on a Tuesday, but uh, I'll, I'll look that up during the break and get you some information about Dr. Milt, what was it, Wolf, Wolfson? I forget his name, but uh, a good, solid conservative running against another 40-year Congress critter, somebody who's been there for 40 years and doesn't even spend time in Kansas. So uh, if you're frustrated, don't want to write a check to Colorado this week, you're too frustrated like I am with the lack of leadership and as a result of the shenanigans that were used to influence our primary elections, uh, this might be a good race to look at. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And I just put up on our Facebook page, wake up, 
with Randy Corcoran. JB took the time to put together a great email to send to Congress today. Has to happen today. Get it in early before they vote. Keep the pressure up. It's a little more detailed than a few sentences, uh, you know, a couple of talking points. It's a very detailed email, but you can just cut and paste it right off of our Facebook page and plug it into your email, send it to Congress, do it today. It's right there on our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. 616, when we come back, Zach, I've never asked you on the air uh, your thoughts about, in fact, we don't. you don't write, you don't talk, you know. Um, but I'd be interested when we come back, your thoughts on my disaffiliation with the Republican Party. I just kind of figured three hours sitting across from one another is probably enough for the I day. i tell you what, it's a big glass window. Uh, couldn't we just put a shade up there, like if we're having a bad day? I yeah, don't... tent the window or there something. You go. Mm, that's a chewy apple. I just took a big bite of while you were giving that. I don't know what I was thinking. It just looked so good sitting there. You were anticipating I'd have like 10 accidents. I guess so. But anyway, <laughs> it is 618 KLZ Morning Show. Looks like a pretty morning, maybe a little rain, I guess, but a gorgeous weekend ahead. Welcome to your Friday as we kick it off right here on KLZ 560. Would be fun to just play music, wouldn't it? Just spend hours playing music for people. Pick up in between talk a little bit. Really, really nice. Friday morning, KLZ morning show. It's Wake Up. I'm Randy Corcoran. Good to have you along. 303-477-5600 is the phone number. Continuing our KLZ call to action to get a hold of Congress today. Uh, I cut and pasted an email from JB into my Facebook page, and um, uh, it's it's great. It's a great email. You can cut and paste and send out to Congress today. If you scroll down the Facebook page a little further, Got links to the emails and phone numbers for Congress, for the White House switchboard, the Capitol switchboard. Uh, Got other real simple email uh, talking points that you can put together. Tea Party Patriots has a website that can help you do it as well. Really, really important. And if you're on Twitter, and uh, so many of us in my age group are really still trying to figure out the social media. And I've gotten, you know, pretty facile with Facebook still don't really know what I'm doing. I just use it and does seem to get the word out from time to time. Twitter is so fast, so easy. And if you're not following me on Twitter, please do. It's just my name. Follow me at Twitter at Randy Corporan, R-A-N-D-Y-C-O-R-P-O-R-O-N. Real easy to do. I just retweeted this. I stand with Cruz at Washington, D.C.T., at John Boehner. Alert call before 9 a.m. Gives the phone number, 888-970-4589. Because Boehner is trying to resuscitate this dying border bill. Got to stop him. We, we just can't let it happen. Other topic of conversation has been my withdrawal from the Republican Party. I'm now among the ranks of the unaffiliated and uh, Lily Williams, a libertarian candidate, and I am not a libertarian. I don't necessarily or typically support libertarians because I don't think that in most cases they can win. They just cost Republicans elections, and uh, I've had plenty of libertarians say that's not true. David K. Williams wrote a blog piece. I have to admit I haven't read it yet, so I'll have to look at that and see if the numbers really stack up. But Lily put a great post on my Facebook page. Thank you, Randy, for the brave action you took. I left R in 08 because I lost faith in them. The R's conduct has gotten worse, not better, since I left. Establishment repubs and Dems are becoming one party. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far, Lily. I am not equating the two. Uh, There are progressives in the Republican Party, no doubt about that. But the Democrats aren't Democrats anymore. The Democrats are these extreme, radical Alinskyites from the 60s, people who put bombs in police stations, who are now, or at least supported and were friends with uh, people who did that sort of thing, that are now in control of our federal government. And most American-minded Democrats simply don't understand what's happened to their party. They haven't met Trevor Lauder. They haven't looked at KeyWiki.org. They haven't read the books that he's written, The Enemies Within. Uh, I can't wait till the movie comes out about the enemies within. That is a great project by Trevor Loudon. But the Republican Party, in my mind, is still the vehicle that we have to use to defeat this agenda from the left. But the Republican Party's got to earn my support. 
I can still sit here and talk about defeating Democrat policies. I can still make this urgent call to action to let Congress and John Boehner and Kevin McCarthy know absolutely not on this immigration fix that you want that will never become law anyway. But I don't have to send checks to the Republican Party. I don't have to self-identify as a Republican. Why should I? They have done nothing to earn my support. And, and, and it's not, you know, well, you've got to work from within. I get that. I've worked from within. I'm still working from within. I've got friends in the Republican Party. I've got friends who are liberty activists who are working within the Republican Party. I've got friends who are establishment Republicans. Unless they cut me off, I'm not going to stop talking to them. I'm not going to stop showing up, making phone calls, supporting candidates who run as Republicans. Lily continues, I wish all the Liberty people, Tea Party, independents, libertarians, conservatives, would join forces together and abandon the sinking ship. See, I, I can't go there. Keep hoping for the party to change after so much baggage and so many years of growing government is a waste of time. Instead of spending so many resources in the primary and fighting within, we could be more effective by being outside. Maybe. I guess I've taken the first step to being open to that conversation. Not there yet. I think we'll have one of two governors in November. John W. Hickenlooper or Bob Beaupre. I'd rather see Bob. I think we'll have two United States senators here in Colorado after November. Mark Udall or Cory Gardner? I would much rather see Cory Gardner. So I don't know about working outside or trying to raise up a third-party movement. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not young enough to survive long enough to see a third party effectively win major elections. But the liberty movement does has to, have to stand up. They have to say, look, I may vote for some Republicans. I will certainly support liberty candidates who run as Republicans. May support some libertarians as well if there isn't a liberty choice on the Republican side of the ticket. But Republican Party, if you want me to affiliate with you, if you want me to be proud to be a Republican and join your ranks again, you've got to do something. You know, I joked about, you know, send us the head of Ryan Call. I, I know that's not going to happen. How about some executive seat positions? Now, there's probably nothing that, uh, I mean, that's a process that has to go through. And I think that process is in process. How about just making a commitment to liberty candidates? How about stepping up Republicans and sending some money, some seed money to Jeffrey Washington, running in House District 8, Five Points, and Curtis Park, a black conservative taking all the barbs that come your way? When you're a black conservative in a very Democrat district, the Republicans won't even play there. This is a guy that can walk into homes and take a message that says, hey, your values and my values as a conservative in the Republican Party are aligned. Could start moving the pendulum, start influencing the debate, even if he doesn't win this time. And he could. It's a Republican wave. People are disgusted with this president. Historic almost historic low poll ratings for Barack Obama, extremely low. 68% of Americans disapprove of Obama's handling of the immigration crisis, of the illegal immigration crisis. Why are the Republicans futzing around with this immigration bill that will never become law, ever? Anyway, Lily, thanks for your thoughts. I, I really respect you so much. You've got such a compelling history. We have to have you on the show. All right, Mike, Dallas, Brad, others, sit tight. 303-477-5600, the way to get into the morning show at 730. John Fund with his great, really looks interesting. Haven't read it, it's new, but uh, in thumbing through on Amazon, looks great, this book exposing Eric Holder for the, the bully and the crook that he is. 632, 28 minutes to go until 7 o'clock. It is KLZ 560. Ooh, baby, Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. I'm, I'm touched. I wasn't looking. All right, let's get back to business. 24 minutes to go until 7 o'clock. The KLZ Morning Show. Wake up, people, with Randy Corcoran. I'm talking about this immigration bill. And I've got callers on the line. We'll get to them in just one second. I... I would promised to talk just for a minute about Milton Wolf, the Tea Party primary challenger to Senator Pat Robert, Roberts in Kansas. Really, really needs some last-minute help. Very, very interesting. He's closing in the polls. 
Uh, in fact, I heard one report yesterday he was up by one. So, you know, you get within one, two, three points on either side. That's the margin of error. That means you are in the running. And so a Republican committee naturally sent about $46,000 in to support Pat Roberts. Uh, Pat Roberts, who will not even debate his constitutional conservative Tea Party challenger, Dr. Milton R. Wolf. Pat Roberts, who's been in the Senate for 40 years and doesn't live in Kansas. How, how do they put up with that? Why would anybody put up with that? He looks like a good old Kansan boy. I, I get that. But so does Dr. Wolf. Young, fresh, conservative, articulate, a physician, a Tea Party guy. If you were frustrated by the Republican primaries here in Colorado, here is a last chance to help a really good guy in a neighboring state take down an establishment Republican. Zach, let's link up to MiltonWolf.com on our Facebook page and, uh, uh, you know, just put a note up there, donate, help before August 5, uh, because that's when the primary is in Kansas. Uh, Check this guy out. I mean, we can help the right candidates from all around the country from right here at home. If there are people you're frustrated about in Colorado, you don't want to send money to a Senate or a congressional candidate here. I understand that. I haven't done it yet. I may, haven't, but uh, this is a guy in a primary fight that looks like he could win. Let's get another victory. Remember how you felt when Eric Cantor went down? Our good friend Christopher Doss visits us every Tuesday on the morning show, the mastermind behind that magnificent takedown, Tea Party Alive and Well. Anyway, uh, had a lot of feedback on my decision to move from the Republican Party to the ranks of the unaffiliated, has not changed my liberty positions one iota. But for me, the Republican Party has got to earn my love, and it ain't doing it. It's not happening. Didn't happen in 2008, 2012. So anyway, Michael, you've been holding a good long time, and I'm sorry about that. Dallas, sit by. We'll come to you next. But Michael in Colorado Springs, what's on your mind? Hey, Randy. Um, really enjoying the conversation this morning. Um, and I I had a comment, and that was, you know, folks like Lily who are writing in, uh, you know, they have every right to, you know, decide that, you know, I'm I'm done with the Republican Party. I think we need to keep in contact with people like this. Politics creates a lot of disgruntled uh, folks on both in both parties. Actually, I think we can take advantage of the type of uh, infighting not just on the Republican side, but on the Democratic side. We need more people like Chris Coop, you know, like friends that can count people that can dig up dirt on these people. And I think it'd be great to have a little asymmetric warfare on the political front. And uh, these 40-year politicians, you know there's some dirt on them, Randy. There's got to be enough dirt to pull these people down. Um, And it would just be great if we could reach out inside the loop out there uh, in D.C. and and pull some strings and get some get some of these, uh, you know, I call them welfare politicians. I mean, they're welfare rats. They sit in there term after term, sucking their uh, constituents dry, putting uh, pork barrel po- projects in these bills that really do nothing to solve any problems. And, uh, you know, these guys really are the scum of the earth. We need to kick them out. So that's that's kind of all I have to say. Well, that's fantastic, Michael, and I, I agree. Um someone who has moved away from the Republican Party is uh, running as a libertarian like Lily. Uh, Those are definitely people we don't want to lose touch with. And those are people that, if they don't get elected themselves, if there are the right liberty-minded candidates in a particular position, they will support them. I haven't heard of any libertarian challengers to Tony Sanchez or to Laura Woods or some of the true constitutional liberty-minded candidates who made it through the Colorado primaries. And uh, those are, we don't want to write anybody off. And if people think that because I'm unaffiliated, I'm not going to continue to work hard to reform and inspire and motivate and remind the Republican Party of who they're supposed to be, who they say they are, what they claim to stand for, well, you're nuts because here I am again, regardless of the letter next to my name, uh, doing the same things. Haven't changed a bit. 641, the KLZ Morning Show, Dallas in Denver. Or is that Denver and Dallas? 
No. Hey, Dallas, how you doing? You've got a comment on the Republicans. Welcome to the morning show. No, it's Dallas and Denver. I get that a lot. From no. show yeah, of course. Okay, you're saying I'm not originally humorous. Is that what you're telling me, Dallas? I'll be brief. Look, um, I'm 59 years old. I'm a precinct captain in Centennial. Hey, Dallas, you're sounding very, very serious to me right now. I'm driving, so I have to pay attention. All right, lay it on me, brother. Uh, look, I've voted in every presidential election since Jerry Ford lost to Jimmy Carter. I, I was at the Tea Party rally in 2009 on the steps of the state capitol, so I probably have an IRS file. God bless you, Look, sir. I'm establishing my bona fides here. Look, I have libertarian friends in Nevada. The reward for their effort on that behalf is they're represented by Harry Reid in the Senate. There, there are certain things that are truisms in politics. One of them is don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. I'm very tired of the ideological purity crowd not getting, not winning elections. Look, I went that route in 1992. I voted for Ross Perot. It earned me eight years of Bill Clinton. Yeah, no, I I agree with, and I've made some of the very similar comments to what you, uh, very similar to what you just said. And then uh, when I had this conversation with a very well-established Republican uh, on Tuesday, who called me up right after the show, and I'd announced my, my change. In affiliation, um, you know, I, after listening to all of the very logical, very reasonable, and in many cases very true things that he said to me, I also had to step back and think about what has supporting the Republicans, no matter what, gotten us. You know, George W. Bush was the biggest spending president in the history of the world until he opened the door to Barack Obama, who put all of that spending and all of that executive power overreach on steroids. And who stood up and said, I'm a compassionate conservative, as though being conservative is not compassionate when it creates more opportunity, more wealth, more freedom for people to live their lives as they see fit. And so the Republican Party, in reading the polls, finding the most electable candidate, hasn't demonstrated a very good track record of success, have they, Dallas? And no, so, and so, I, I, no I, I agree, but look— so what William do we do? William F. Buckley had another truism, and I think he has more standing in this arena than either of us. He said, I vote for the most conservative candidate who can win. Until we start winning elections, we'll continue to be marginalized and defined by our enemies. And that's what I call them because they – look, I'm a small business owner. That's why I'm at work right now. I'm, I'm for all the things you talk about, but until you win elections, it's all just hot air. Well, I, I agree with that, but that's a, that is a mischaracterization, and I don't mean it's intentional. It's, it's common thought around Republican circles that that's what Bill Buckley said, but that's not what Bill Buckley said. What Bill Buckley said is that, and this was in the primary battle between Barry Goldwater and um, um, uh, uh, the... Uh, not Bill Miller, that was his running mate. No, the uh, the <laughs> the establishment Republican, Barry Goldwater against the uh, Rockefeller. the Rockefellers. Yeah, the Rockefeller family. I couldn't, yeah. couldn't pull it out of what's left in my brain pan. Um, and, and what he said is after, and this was in an executive meeting, and, and I read this article. We've linked up to it many times on our Facebook page. We'll get it up there again. Uh, it was written by a guy who was in the room. And what Bill Buckley said is that the the common wisdom was clear that Go, uh, Rockefeller was going to get all the big business. Uh, he was going to get the moderate Republicans on the East Coast. He had far more money. He was more likable. Go, you know, Goldwater was a hard case, tough to listen to, talk straight, all that. And so around this editorial board meeting, William Buckley, uh, when everybody turned to Bill because once he made his edict, that's how it was going to be at the Weekly Standard. And he said that the Weekly Standard, the I'm sorry, the National Review will support the most rightward viable candidate. And what? And so they selected Barry Goldwater, even though no one believed that Barry Goldwater was going to win that election. That's very true that Barry Goldwater laid the groundwork for Ronald Reagan's victory in 1980. Yes, sir. And and William F. Buckley ran as a conservative in New York uh, in a place where there was not a chance that somebody with his credentials was going to win. I know there have been sacrificial lambs on the political landscape, but look, I'm just telling you that there are people like me who look at these ideological purists and we just shake our heads because until you win elections, you don't get anything done. Look, get them elected and then we'll co-opt them after they're in there, Randy. 
we'll we'll turn them to the dark side once we get them in there. But you can't do anything <laughs> unless they're holding the left and off. Now, Dallas, you're absolutely right. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is that the the establishment tactics, the establishment strategies, playing to the middle. Uh, putting, finding the most electable based on some poll six months or two years ahead of an election, they haven't played out well for us. No, it's true. That's why four million people sat on their hands and wouldn't vote for Mitt Romney. Absolutely, sir. No, so. I know. It is It is a devil's bargain. You yeah. know, I have put so much time and effort into recruiting people to our cause, and, and everybody cares so much for this country. And we just, I mean, it's just looking like curtains if we don't. If we don't win some elections and get some credible people in there who love this country, who defend our values, I, I couldn't agree more. It's it's a tough road to hoe, you know, and but it's our lot. And we've got a republic if we can keep it. But I've got to jump, and I appreciate your time. Dallas, sir. really enjoy, fast. Enjoy I appreciate it. Go to my Facebook page. We're going to put up uh, this, ver- this Buckley rule according to Bill, not Carl Rove, by uh, Neil Freeman, the guy who was in the meeting that day. You'll find it very interesting. And it was a great call. Dallas, call again soon. I hope you will. Thank you, sir. All right, Dallas in Denver. I love saying that, and I guess I'm not the only one. Well, it is my kind of gorgeous-looking Friday morning. Mountains are pretty. Sky is blue with some nice-looking clouds as the sun comes up. I uh, I walked to the east side of the building uh, for the sunrise this morning. It was an inspiring way to start your Friday, and you know how we love Fridays around here on the morning show. No early alarm clock for two whole days. Look at that big smile on Zach's face. He's got two little kids, so he's got his own version of early alarm clocks, but I bet they don't go off at 3 a.m., do they? No, usually between five and six. Yeah. But that's sleeping in for you. And <laughs> hey, me yeah, that, that's I'm, good for me. I'll I'm take loving it. that. <laughs> Steve writes on our Facebook page. I'm no Ryan Call fan, but I found out last night that he's been out of town, perhaps out of country, on a Mormon mission trip. For now, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But I need to hear from him soon on Mississippi and the Republican Attorney General's Attorneys General Association and Republican Governors Association messing into our primary elections. Steve, I got news for you. Ryan Call was at the Arapo County Men's Club on uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, maybe he's gone now. Uh, he's been promising me a breakfast meeting. He's been promising to come on the morning show for six, well, seven months now. Seven months. Uh, so maybe he's out of town, but he hasn't been. And at the men's club, and I can't go to those anymore because of the morning show, but uh, my spies there tell me he made no apologies whatsoever for the RGA. So how about that? No need to wait. Straight from the horse's mouth. That's what he said, I am told, by very reliable sources. Ten minutes to go until 7 o'clock. At 7.30, John Fund will join us to talk about his new book, a a very interesting read, it looks like to me, Obama's Enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department. First time in for John Fund, a... uh, speaker, a writer, a commentator of national prominence. We love bringing them to you here in Denver on the morning show. So stay with us. Phone lines are buzzing, but there's one line open, 303-477-5600, 477-5600. Look forward to your call right here on the morning show. Wake up with Randy Corcoran on KLZ 560. Man, Zach is all revved up today. Good stuff from Zach Pugh on the KLZ Morning Show, 655. Man, the show has gone fast today. Phone lines are loaded up. We'll get to them in just one second. But uh, that song that reminded me of Detroit and all the crumbling homes uh, never better demonstrated than in the great new movie, There's No Place Like Utopia, Joel Gilbert's film. Been on the morning show a ton of times. Had him on earlier in the week to remind us that the show is opening up in a bunch of new theaters right here in Colorado. So if you haven't seen it, in fact, it doesn't matter whether you've seen it or not. Grab somebody, go again. we got to feed this film so that everybody understands that um, uh, that people want to see it. If people want to see it, then by Labor Day it will be nationwide. It could have a strong influence on the elections in November for 2014. And it's now available in Aurora at the original theater that I saw it at when it opened first run here in Denver uh, at Colorado Boulevard and I-25. It's in Highlands Ranch. It's in Westminster. It's all over. So we'll link up to it on our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. There's no place like utopia.com. Easy to find by going to our Facebook page. We've 
going to talk about the call to action with Congress today when we come back on the other side. And uh, uh, a couple of other things I want to share with you before we get to our 730 guest, John Fund, and his great book on Eric Holder. David Harsanyi is with us on Monday, the editor-in-chief at The Federalist. I just love the guests that Zach lines up, the big brains here for the morning show. Speaking of big brains, longtime activists, our good friend, very first caller ever in the history of Wake Up with Randy Corporan, Maureen, has been holding. Maureen, welcome back to the morning show. You've got something on Barry Goldwater in Denver. I do. Uh, the Republican Party in Denver was doing everything absolutely that it could to defeat Barry Goldwater. Mm. I know, because I was in on the whole thing. And so uh, the Liberty people at that time set up a para Goldwater committee. We were doing everything we could to have him elected. I was appointed, uh, the city of Denver was divided into two halves, and I was appointed to the position of Goldwater committee chairman uh, at that time. I can tell you the Republican Party did not want Barry. It wasn't the Democratic Party. They didn't need any help in defeating him. They had the Republican Party to defeat Barry Goldwater. Now, the the Democrats were depicting Goldwater as a warmonger. Lyndon Johnson's... Sounds uh, familiar. Happened to Ronald Reagan as well. Go ahead. Anyway, Lyndon Johnson's people... We're saying, oh, Barry Goldwater is a goal, is a warmonger. We're going to, you know, we'll the war will be uh, enlarged and we'll lose the war, et cetera, et cetera. Barry Goldwater wants to bomb beyond the Yalu River. So Barry Goldwater was defeated. And the day after the election, Lyndon Johnson bombed beyond the Yalu River. Yeah. Well, it's such a great example of the more things change, we think, the more they stay the same, isn't it, Maureen? It is. And I know you uh, are in support of my decision to become unaffiliated, not to stop working on the Republican Party, not to stop working on electing liberty candidates who run as Republicans, but I just can't be affiliated with a party that doesn't give a damn about me, that's not reaching out to me, that is not earning my membership, my allegiance, my resources, etc. Do you agree? Yes, I do. And here's the thing, and I wanted to say this yesterday. Thank you for the time today. Uh, to remain in an organization and try to reform it with, from within never in history works. You have to get out of the organization and do everything you can to pursue your own beliefs and so forth. It lends it to to stay in an organization with which you cannot agree or support lends its strength whether you ever lift a finger or not. Well, you know, it's an excellent point, and I'm not certain that uh, I wouldn't become a Republican again. I, I think we need liberty activists taking over roles of leadership in the Republican Party that perhaps it can be reformed from within. Hmm, feels so good to ease into the final hour of the Friday edition of the KLZ Morning Show. Wake up. I'm Randy Corcoran. Good to have you along. Six minutes after 7 o'clock. Good looking weekend ahead. Nice looking morning right now. Zach Pugh will update the weather, give you your traffic report here in just a few minutes. Richard has been hanging on the phones and waiting for a good long time. And Richard, I appreciate it. I hate when we run up against the top of the hour breaks and people have to wait. But uh, you're first out of the gate with a comment on our discussion. We've been talking about the immigration bill. We've been talking about the Buckley rule. We've been talking about Randy Corcoran, freshly minted, unaffiliated voter, no longer a member of the Republican Party. So uh, what's on your mind, Richard? And welcome to the show. Uh, three quick things. Randy, I agree with you being unaffiliated. I was a longtime Democrat, went that way. And because of the governor's race, I, I switched to the Republican Party to vote for Tom Tancredo. And probably after this election, I'll probably follow your footsteps and go back to being unaffiliated. Well, remember, it doesn't matter your affiliation. You know, one of the things I wanted to do was send a message to the Republican Party. If, if you value me as, uh, as a member, as someone who contributes, who really cares about the party itself, 
then act like it. Earn my vote. Act, demonstrate some leadership. When something happens that's wrong, call it wrong. Call it bad. Don't be afraid. Don't think about the politics with every decision that you make. So even if you're unaffiliated, you can still vote the ticket that you wish. It doesn't impact your ability to vote in November. So uh, I haven't made a call out for others to follow my lead and and move to the unaffiliated category. But I think uh, Republicans seeing their membership drop here in the state of Colorado would send a message. And you know what? If you clean it up, if you fix it, if there's a mea culpa, if you pump money into races like Jeffrey Washington, like Tony Sanchez, the Liberty candidates running as Republicans, earn our support, Republican Party. You cannot take us for granted anymore. What do you think, Richard? Yeah, I agree with you. The other thing is I like your opening to your show. And the third thing is... uh, did you know that undocumented work people can now get Colorado driver's licenses yeah. and, and uh, ID cards as of today? Yeah, and, and the Department of Motor Vehicle, and I've got a different phrase for those undocumented people. I call them illegal immigrants. Well, I was going to say that, <laughs> but I, I figured I'd use use the undocumented yeah and i and i would encourage you not to because this is part of how the left makes these incremental inroads into our society into our culture (laughs) into our language do not be afraid to call a spade a spade yeah they are uh, illegal you're right and uh i uh, I should have said that out of the box but yeah that's that that's something else on our plate and that affects us here more because you know a lot of these people you know Wait till the first snowstorm, and they have no idea. Oh, what Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just wait till it's time for you, Joe Citizen, who's paid his taxes uh, year after year after year, to go wait in line at Motor Vehicle and see how well the Department of Motor Vehicle handles this influx of illegal immigrants who now can get driver's licenses, making it legal to drive on our roads. You know, they won't use those to vote, you know. Yeah, or, or, or the Democrats <laughs> use it as a... Uh, as a base for more voters. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know what the difference is supposed to be? Well, they can't vote with that driver's license because that driver's license, the picture and the information are vertical. And on the other driver's licenses, the picture and the information are horizontal. So you can tell the difference. You can vote in this state with a utility bill. You can vote in a county or a district by declaring your intentions to vote there. I mean, come on, people. This is a joke. And... It, we we have to stand up strong. We've got Republicans in Congress. Instead of going on their five-week vacation and leaving us alone for a little bit over a month, John Boehner and, and Kevin McCarthy are forcing the members to stay to try and pass some immigration fix bill that will never become law. The Senate, the president aren't going to follow this bill. Why upset your base? Why make your members mad by keeping them away from long-term plans and badly needed rest? And I believe that. I believe in vacations for these people. I I just don't understand it, Richard. You can see why I became unaffiliated. And if you're headed that way anyway, why wait? Well, I just made the switch. I I said I would uh, stay until after the election and then... uh, and, th- and then switch back. Well, Richard, I appreciate the call very, very much. Thanks for being a listener to The Morning Show. Thanks for staying on hold so long. Telephone number is 303-477-5600, 477-5600. At 7.30, John Fund. Uh, new book, Obama's Enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department. We'll link up to an article that talks about the book uh, right out of the National Review, National Review Online. And John Fund will be here. We'll see what he's got to say about a host of issues. First time in the morning show, John Fund joins us at 7.30. KLZ 560, I'm Randy Corcoran, 303-477-5600, the number. Back to the couple of calls to action that we have to have on our plates for today and for the weekend. One is, let's make sure we continue to support There's No Place Like Utopia. It's expanding today into five theaters, one in Aurora, the Century 16, the UA Colorado, where it started, I-25 and Colorado Boulevard, the AMC 24 in Highlands Ranch, and the UA Denver West Village Stadium. Uh, I'm not sure where that is. It doesn't say. But uh, the AMC Westminster Promenade 
Anyway, one, two, three, four, five new theaters now. Five times the theaters. That's happening all around the country. And if this movie continues to do well, it will be nationwide by Labor Day. Could have an amazing impact on the elections in November. Really could. That UA Denver West Village Stadium 12 is in Golden. So anywhere you are in the general metro area, there's a theater near you now. We have to get people in front of this movie. There's no place like Utopia. Not only that, you will really, really enjoy it. And then probably the most significant call to action. Well, you know what? We'll save that for last. The next call to action is right next door in Kansas. A Tea Party constitutional conservative Senate challenger is giving Pat Roberts a huge run for his money. In fact, a national Republican group just contributed $45,400 to Senator Pat Roberts in the primary because the Tea Party guy is making a dent. I mean, I heard reports last night that he was within one point. One report said he was leading by one point. This is a 40-year senator who no longer even resides in Kansas. The people just keep reelecting him. 40 years, a career politician, a Tea Party challenger on the other side. This is a guy who would not debate Dr. Milton Wolf. Oh no, I'm not going to I'm not going to talk to that challenger. This is a Tea Party guy that could use our support. We have linked up to his website on our Facebook page Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. 5 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks. This is how we make a difference all around the country, putting our money where our mouth is. Even Politico is reporting that Milton Wolf has closed the gap. So that's big. And then the biggest thing that we have to do, we put out this call to action yesterday, and it continues because we killed the bill yesterday, but John Boehner and Kevin McCarthy just won't let it go. We must call Congress, send emails. I've put up an email you can just cut and paste. We've put up links to uh, Red State, their act. Uh, Action Center, uh, they've got talking points you can put into emails or that when you leave your voicemail or make your call to the White House switchboard, the Capitol switchboard, your particular representative, whoever it is, make it very, very easy to say no on the John Boehner border bill. Absolutely not. Why do it? It's not going to become law. Why do you want to irritate your base? Do you really think, John Boehner, that by passing some bill that gives the Obama, the Obama, (laughs) gives the president more money than he's even asking for, what? This guy does not enforce the laws that are on the books. He uses money. He uses his power. He uses his cell phone and his pen to do whatever the heck he wants. You're going to give him more money? You think you're going to get credit from the mainstream media for passing this bill? Move on, John Boehner. He'll only do it if we keep the pressure on right through today. This should be the last day of Congress. We can stop this thing, but it's going to take our action. So go to our Facebook page. Wake up with Randy Corcoran. Please, please, please don't let the day go by. And I'm, and don't wait. I mean, they could try a vote again this morning. They could try a vote again at 1 or 2 o'clock. John Boehner and Kevin McCarthy could be threatening these members that if we don't get this passed, we are not going home. That's got to be incredible leverage on people who are looking forward to spending some summer time with their families and their kids and all of that good stuff. So we've just got to be the cavalry that comes to the rescue of the patriots like Ted Cruz who are saying absolutely not to this kind of two-part approach that John Boehner wants to take. Just let it go. You will not get credit. John Boehner, you are getting accused of wanting and planning to impeach the president. You've said that's not going to happen. I'm half convinced it probably shouldn't politically. But you're still getting lambasted. The Democrats are fundraising because they say you are. So Republicans, quit worrying about what the Democrats are going to say, what the media is going to say. Do the right thing. Think about your base. Show that you respect us, that you understand us, that you know you need our support or you can't accomplish a thing you cannot win. Really, just let it die, John Boehner. Uh, Not one to go back on callers very often, but I did get a couple comments on Dallas and Denver's call. Uh, Dallas means well, but he's wrong. You have to have conservative candidates. You can't hold a moderate to task. Once they win, they never listen when they're in office. And uh, so (laughs) 
Uh, this poster agrees with me. I, I'd rather get 90% agreement rather than 50%. You know, 70 or 80%, I think, was Ronald Reagan's rule. I get it. These are tough conversations. And um, Ken Clark has invited me to join him on Freedom 560. I'll be with him in studio at noon to talk more about my decision to become an unaffiliated. Uh, John Rush commented on this quite a bit during his show yesterday. John, you're dead to me now. 20 minutes after 7 o'clock, the KLZ Morning Show with Randy Corcoran. Stay with us. We will be right back. Oh, yeah. Zach Pugh, Randy Corcoran, the KLZ Morning Show. Wake up with Randy Corcoran. We love us some Friday. We're in the final hour of the Friday edition of the Morning Show. Glad to have you along. 23 minutes after 7 o'clock, one phone line is open at 303-477-5600. There's been a lot of chatter since Tuesday when I announced my decision to step out of the Republican Party, become unaffiliated. And uh, I was going to ask Zach for his take on that because we haven't talked, but now the phone rang again. So uh, instead, we've got Becky Mizell standing by. She is the chairman of the Republican Party in Pueblo. She's got an event to talk about. And Becky, welcome back to the morning show. I have a question for you. Yes, Randy. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. All right. That's it. Talk to you later. See ya. What's no. your question? <laughs> I, uh, I know you have to say when you said Republican Party of Pueblo. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you know, on Tuesday I um, I changed my affiliation. I stepped out of the Republican Party in my little protest vote, my expression of dissatisfaction with Republican leadership. Uh, obviously, that doesn't apply to you. You've done amazing work for liberty and freedom as chairman of the Pueblo Republican Party, instrumental in the recall elections, all of those great things. and But you are in party leadership. I think we share a common mind about many things. What do you think about my yes, decision? Do. What do you think about my decision? I think it was probably necessary, considering the circumstance, and we wanted people to really step up and say that that was not correct. Um, none of that behavior is correct, and I think all Republicans should be horrified whether or not they like Tom Tancredo or not. This is this is not what this is about. This is about integrity and knowing that our primary process really should work. And um, we should be, you know, so it's very difficult for me sometimes to know that I'm very much part of the party system sure. when this kind of, when these kind of antics happen. Let me tell you. So. Well, very, very interesting. And I will be continuing that conversation at noon today with Ken Clark on Freedom 560. Right. He's invited me into the studio, and we should have some fun with that. You've got a really cool event coming up down there in Pueblo that ought to draw some folks down from Denver and places further north. Definitely. And um, speaking of always doing things differently down in Pueblo, we have Victor Head, who is part of you know a huge growing force of the recall of Angela Heron. And speaking of the GOP, they told us many, many times to back out of doing this. So, but we went ahead anyway because we know Pueblo, we know our community. When you know your grassroots community, you can make a difference. So Victor, of course, um, was the drawing force, Pueblo for Human Rights, to help take Angela Heron out. You bet. Over the Second Amendment issue. So with that, when Victor was running, though, he also discovered quite a bit of things going on with the election integrity as we all know, these new election bills that have passed are just really going to be very difficult for, even if we want to win, it's going to be difficult to win with these new elections. I call them shady practices. Yeah. They put in with um, House Bill 1303 and those type of situations that have gone on. So anyway, our county clerk, who has no term limits whatsoever, there's only four, three or four clerks in the state without term, term limits, he helped write some of the, that legislation, and we want to take him out. And so Victor Head is running against um, Bo Ortiz, is his name, and Victor Head for county clerk, and he's having a big golf tournament August 9th for a fundraiser. Yeah, that is fantastic. And let's see, mm -hmm. August 9th, that'll be a Saturday. It is. It's Saturday, August 9th, and we would love to have you come down and just have a, a two-man team, a one-person team, or a foursome. Or if you can't, sponsor a hole for your business for Victor. We would love to have you down here. Yeah, and we, we stepped up. I mean, you know, Victor Head and, and uh, Mike McAlpine and others did such amazing work in the recalls. They've continued their activity, taken what they've learned into other areas and ever, other avenues. I'm so impressed with these guys. And so the morning show, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, is sponsoring one of those 
uh, golf holes down there for a hundred bucks. I, I just think it's the least we can we do to say that, Randy. It's the least we can so do to say thank that. you to these folks, Becky. I mean, it's just it's the least mm-hmm. we can do. These people have been working for years now for the cause. Well, Victor actually is very new to politics. The Second Amendment um, issue brought him in. He's only a twenty-eight, twenty-nine-year-old. So. These are the kind of people we've wanted to draw into the party. So now that they're in, we really want to support them. Well, and what I meant is, what I meant about Victor is nonstop. I mean, last year when he got oh. involved in these recalls, no. we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're in the second year now. And it's, it, it wasn't just the recalls. Now I'm going to go home and go back to my life. It's, hey, I right. learned some stuff. We're putting it on the ground. We're putting it to work. So what, right. a, what an opportunity to help one of the good guys. Where can people find out more? Can you send me a link? We'll put it up on our Facebook page as well. Certainly, www.headforclerk.com, or you can call Victor at 719-214-0279. I'm writing this down for our Facebook page, 214-0279. Okay, very good, 719. All right, excellent. Becky Mizell, the golf tournament in support of Victor Head. I love it. We've contributed ourselves. I'm not a golfer, probably won't show up, but... uh, Um, Man, let's support the good guys all around the state, all around the country. Becky, have a great weekend. Thanks very much much for calling. Mike in Colorado Springs, a comment on Republicans. What do you got for us? Welcome to the morning show. Uh, Randy, it's not necessarily about Republicans. It's about politics in general. All right. There's a a phrase, basically, you cannot expect problems to be solved with the same insanity that that created them. And, you know, I, I... I, I look at the, 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 the whole political situation, and, and 2010 was the most significant date for me because, you know, there was, uh, you know, the Tea Party gave, formed, uh, uh, grew, uh, gained power, and, you know, gave the Republicans one last shot um, to do the right thing, and Republicans doubled down and, you know, on their progressive policies. Um, I, I just see that, that this, is, this is not, we're not making you know, not making strides by trying to do things politically. You know, electing people is not making the difference. You, though, you know, you're a, you you are, you know, very involved with the Tea Party. Um, you're you've got a great voice. Um, not, I mean, a, a great voice that that resounds. You know, across Colorado. Well, it's thank you, great... Mike. No, well, I'm it, kidding. I know what you mean. mean uh, no, I know what you mean. These are, these are powers that you know. I, I I just wish you would spend less time on trying to get people elected. And, and more time getting people organized. I think that's the real power that you mm, have. Interesting. Well, that's that's. I mean, very... there's, a, there's an algorithm how much time that you as as one person can do, you know, can, can what you can do, and, and how much time you can spend on on, on each, um, you know, on each aspect of, of of fighting for the for liberty. But um, you know, the, the political stuff is, you know, politicians should follow your lead. Your group should be the one that they come crawling to, ask asking for your support. And if they aren't doing that, then we just got to get them out. Wow. Powerful stuff, Mike. And I will definitely give that some thought as far as the way we organize our time. And, and, um, you know, it's easy to get caught up into the battles of day-to-day politics, especially during primary season and running up to the election. There's a lot of time in between, a couple of years, to continue to organize, continue to work on principle and articulation and persuasion, all those kinds of things. Uh, but it's it's a really, really good point, Mike, and I will give it uh, take it to heart. So it's 731. I cannot wait because when we come back, John Fund will be here to talk about his new book on Eric Holder and uh, really the enforcer behind the Obama administration. Under Eric Holder, the Justice Department has stood the old Ronald Reagan maxim, trust but verify, on its head and adopted a trust-and-we-won't-let-you-verify approach to its activities. So says John Fund, the author of the brand-new book, Obama's Enforcer, all about Eric Holder's Justice Department. He joins us next on the KLZ Morning Show. Stay with us at 732. I'm Randy Corcoran. It's KLZ 560. (laughs) Dolly Parton? It's a (laughs) 9 to 5. Okay. (laughs) All right, welcome back. KLZ Morning Show. It's Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. We've been uh, pounding on Republicans and John Boehner trying to shove this immigration bill down our throat, talking about a recent political decision that I made that people are all over the board on. Uh, We'll continue that conversation with Ken Clark on Freedom 560 later on today. He's asked me back in studio to continue the debate since it's caught such fire. 
But all week long, I've been looking forward to this interview. John Fund is the national affairs columnist for National Review Online, a senior editor at the American Spectator, commentator. I've seen him on Fox News, on uh, Wall Street Journal Report. Uh, really, uh, John, very, very prolific, never been on the morning show. Welcome to Denver. I'm so glad to have you here to talk about your new book. Pleasure, and I'm looking forward to being in Denver next month for the State Policy Network, which is all of the national free market think tanks. Oh, I was unaware that you would be here, so maybe we can try and hook up with you, find 10 or 15 Absolutely. minutes to get you back on the air. Um, this new book, uh, Eric Holder is such a, a force of nature right now with a, an executive, a president who wields executive power like no other uh, uh, Eric, I almost said Eric Cantor. Eric Holder is absolutely, as your new book is entitled, Obama's Enforcer. So let's talk about that. What got you onto the topic of Eric Holder? Well, the Justice Department is the federal cabinet agency that probably has more impact on Americans' daily lives than any other. There are 125,000 people working there, 40 divisions enforcing everything from environmental law to civil rights to workplace law to securities law. Uh, they have a big mandate. And it's very important the Justice Department not be operated in a political way. Now, every attorney general has to follow the president's priorities, and certainly some will shift with administration to administration. But Eric Holder has politicized the department and bent it to the rule of men more than the rule of law. And that's very sad. In fact, we quote a senior Justice Department official who's there in a career position as saying this is the most political Justice Department since John Mitchell misruled it under Richard Nixon. Absolutely incredible. And you pull no punches in this book, as people know. And we've linked up to the book on our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. You can go uh, into Amazon and actually look inside the book. And uh, Chapter 3 caught my mind because of my love and constant advocacy for and talking about the Constitution. Chapter 3 of your book is called A Contempt for the Constitution and the Rule of Law. That really sums it up, doesn't it? Well, look, Eric Holder is the only attorney general in America's history to be held in contempt of Congress. And that is because he refused to turn over documents to Congress in its oversight capacity on the Fast and Furious scandal. That was the gun-running scandal in which, for some bizarre reason, the Justice Department paid straw donor, straw uh, uh, agents to go into gun shops, buy guns, transfer them to Mexican drug rings, and then try to trace them. Well, the program was a fiasco. A U.S. border agent was killed with one of the guns. Hundreds of Mexicans were killed. And Holder refused to turn over the documents to explain how this happened. Well, just yesterday, a federal judge announced that uh, even though Holder is continuing to refuse to deliver the documents, he's going to order that uh, some of them, an index of them, which will give us a clue as to what's in them, will be released publicly, and probably the rest of the documents will be released in the next few months. But it's a cover-up, because Holder obviously doesn't have any particular national security reason for holding the documents. So he's just holding them to make sure that people in the Justice Department evade accountability for their outrageous actions in this scandal. The extent, the extraordinary utilization of executive power under this administration has even gotten the attention of very liberal lawyers, very liberal journalists. Uh, Jill Abramson, the former executive editor of the New York Times, says that the Obama administration has moved beyond protecting government secrets to threatening fundamental freedoms of the press to gather news. Why are not more people in America waking up to what's happening? Oh, I think they slowly are. Um, An enormous number of Americans, according to the new CNN poll, are very concerned about Obama's executive overreach. A clear majority of independents, overwhelming majority of Republicans. In fact, in the latest CNN poll, believe it or not, 14 percent of liberals and Democrats not want Obama impeached. So it's growing slowly. And the Supreme Court is noticing in just the last two years, the Supreme Court has unanimously ruled that includes the two Obama appointees against the Obama administration's position on constitutional questions. Thirteen times. You don't get a unanimous Supreme Court decision often on a key issue. And the Supreme Court is, I think, waking up to the fact that this is not a Democrat or Republican administration so much as it is a rogue administration, violating our civil liberties and ignoring our constitutional traditions. 
Well, your book is going to be an important factor, and I, I just love the timing of, of books like this uh, as we lead up to a very important election, what many people are hoping, praying, and believing is going to be a, another Republican wave, much like, if not bigger than uh, 2010. But Obama's enforcer, I mean, this guy has managed, he's like the Teflon attorney general. He, he smirks at Congress, he refuses subpoenas, being held in contempt. Do we have a Congress, John Fund, that has the courage to actually act on that contempt citation? I mean, why hasn't this guy been arrested? Well, we have a flaw in our constitutional system. Uh, when Congress holds someone in contempt, that has to be transmitted by the Justice Department to a U.S. attorney, the local federal prosecutor, in the district where that person lives for enforcement. Exactly. Well, Guess who's in charge? <laughs> well, the problem is the Justice Department hasn't even said to the local U.S. attorney, oh, by the way, we have this. I mean, we don't need no stinking rules. Exactly. So the, but, but there is hope. You know, if the Senate goes Republican, that will amplify and magnify the investigative and oversight powers of the U.S. House and Bureau ISIS Committee. In addition, the Senate and the House can then pass budget bills limiting some of the activities of the Justice Department, cutting back the budget of some departments there. And Obama can veto, but he can't veto any everything because a lot of the bills that land at his desk are must-sign bills that he doesn't have the line on him veto. He'll have to accept some restrictions on some of the activities of the Justice Department if the Senate and the House can act in concert together. Well, your new book, Obama's Enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department, uh, couldn't be more timely as we run up to November 2014. I, I love your work on nationalreview.com, The American Spectator. There are places I spend a lot of time every single week. And uh, tell me again when you're going to be in Denver so we can follow up and get you back on the air. Sure. It'll be about September the 21st, and it'll be uh, downtown, I think, near Brown's Hotel. And I look forward to seeing you then. Very good. John Fun, thank you very much for wandering into the studio here in Denver. The morning show, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran on KLZ 560. Look forward to talking to you in a couple weeks. And we are definitely linking up to this very interesting-looking book, Obama's Enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department. That's John Fun. Thank you, everybody. Man, I would love to dig into that man's brain. Uh, we'll get him back. Hopefully when he's in Denver, he'll have a little more time to spend with us. John Fun, another one of the prolific, important, courageous uh, writers and speakers. If you ever watch the Wall Street Journal Weekly Report or whatever it is, Fox plays it, I forget the name, but man, he will go in there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the editors of the Wall Street Journal who tend to take a, off on a more establishment Republican line. So anyway, we got a taste. It was a tease. We'll have him back. And uh, right now, though, at 747, we are about to wrap up the KLZ Morning Show. So when we get back for the final segment, last chance to get in. Phone lines are open right now, 303-477-5600. We'll go down the list of the action items for you today and this weekend, nothing more important than first thing this morning, making those calls and those emails to Congress. Do not pass the Boehner border bill. So stay with us. KLZ 560. Yeah, I've got that right. About nine minutes to go until 8 o'clock, the end of the final Friday edition of the morning show here on KLZ. Wake up with Randy Corcoran. Almost forgot my own name. Anyway. I, uh, we've got so many action items for you. Make sure you take a look at our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Send a last-minute donation to Milton Wolf in Kansas, another Tea Party conservative about to unseat an establishment Republican senator. And then, of course, there's no place like Utopia has expanded to five theaters. Just go to their website. Go to our Facebook page. You'll find it there as well. Uh, got to get out and support that movie. And then the big deal. Got to do it this morning. No time to waste. We have to call Congress and say no to the Boehner border bill. Uh, John in Denver, sit tight. Derek Wilburn is on the line. Derek, I thought we were going to miss you today. So glad you called in. Welcome back to the morning show. Hey, bro. Just wanted to check in. I am, as we, as you know, my oldest son is a basic cadet at the United States Air Force Academy. And this morning they are doing a march in from Jack's Valley. People in Colorado Springs or within Air Force history will know what that is, but it, it's the end of basic training for the for the class of 2018. And we're sitting out here roadside on the parade loop, waiting for them to come marching by. It's a it's a proud parent moment. Take some pictures, yell and scream. We got signs made, 
And uh, that's that's what I'm doing right now. We've been sitting out here since oh dark thirty, waiting for these kids to come marching by. Man, Derek, that is fantastic. I uh, you you must be so proud. What a what a great kid you managed to raise. Now a young man serving his country in the the parade. I, I imagine we'll see some pictures on the Facebook page for American Conservatives of Color. That is inevitable. The most <laughs> uh, very selective good. school in the country. Less than eight percent of applicants get accepted, and uh, our boy's going to come marching by here. Hopefully, in about a half an hour. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's the, the best, the brightest. We need to support our armed forces, of course. But those that go to Annapolis, West Point, Colorado Springs, uh, that that's the cream of the crop. And I am just couldn't be happier that my 17-year-old is, is out here and a part of this deal. So I missed you this morning, but that's my excuse. Yeah, well, it's great and uh, well justified. Family first, you better believe it. Now, how did the fundraiser go with C.L. Bryant? I, I missed it. I didn't get it on my calendar. I guess there wasn't a Facebook event. I rely... A lot on those these days, but how did that all turn out? CL, as you know, uh, when he brings the thunder, man, it <laughs> you're ready to put your helmet and shoulder pads on and say, "Coach, put me in the game." And, yeah. and he he did exactly that. Just uh, tore it up. We had about sixty or seventy people squeezed into that house. It was absolutely amazing. I'll give you a, a more detailed rundown next Friday. That sounds good. And what night was it? Because I'm so mad at myself. I really wanted to come out, see my old friend CL, and shake your hand and thank Brian for putting this together for you guys. You missed it. It was uh, Tuesday evening okay. at their place in Greenwood Village. And uh, we're actually going to have another one. Another another patriot who lives out in the Boulder uh, County area has said, let's, let's do this at our place, too, in September. So you're going to get another chance here in a minute. Derek, thank you very much for checking in. Next week we'll get you on early, talk longer about what's next for American conservatives of color. But uh, for right now, the, thank you for your son and his service to our country. Enjoy your proud moment. I really appreciate the call this morning. Bye, bro. Talk to you. Okay, man. we got back-to-back Johns on the line. John, in Denver, you've been waiting the longest. Uh, you're calling in on the Boehner Border Bill. I just had a comment that um, um, I'm definitely against it, but I was just I'm kind of curious, is, is it a, actually a good thing that they're not taking their time off or else our beloved president would um, implement more bills while they're on recess? No, I say get, get them out of there. Get Congress. This is an impotent Congress as far as I'm concerned. Um, there can be things going on behind the scenes. Let the president show his true colors while Congress is out. Let the focus of the media and this radio show and your energies and Derek's energies and everybody else focus on the bad guys on the other side for a change. I, I say let them go. This bill, they're going to take their vacation, and they should. I, the Congress, Man, Congress shouldn't be in session year-round as it is as far as I'm concerned. But uh, get them out of there. No more harm to be done. They're not going to stop this president anyway, John. Yeah, that's true. Um, I definitely agree with that. Um, I also had another comment um, on your uh, independent status. Um, I just I have uh, always gone towards the uh, Republican. Uh, my my father was, but I've always been registered independent. And it was kind of interesting because the last few elections I've been. Uh, searching some, looking around on some Democratic sites just for some follow-up and background information. But I received two uh, voting cards in the mail, and I'm just wondering if that's trying to persuade my uh, decision to vote Democrat on both of these voting um, registrations that I received. Hmm. Well, you know, I, I figure if these parties want us, if these candidates want us, they've got to earn our support, earn our respect. The Republican Party has not done that. That's why I've turned unaffiliated. Ken Clark will pick up that conversation with me live in studio at noon today on Freedom 560. John and Parker, you're probably it for the morning show. It's always good to hear your voice. Thanks for calling in. Good morning. What do you got for me? Yes, Randy. Yeah, I wanted to encourage you uh, at some point to come back to the Republican Party, and the reason is is because by being active in the party, you have a voice. You can be elected the precinct leader, and then you are actually able to vote for who or chairwoman is of your county. So you you can actually have a vote in determining whether or not a constitutional conservative is running your 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 party in your county. You can also run to be a, a delegate uh, or a bonus member to the central committee, and then you actually have a vote on who is the chairman or chairwoman of the state and the other elected uh, 
people like Ryan Call and Mark Basie, those people are elected by the people who are members of the Central Committee and are elected to those positions. So by being involved in the party, you, ha- you, have, and you have the power, you actually have an vo- actual vote in determining whether or not constitutional conservatives are in the party positions and running the party. Well, excellent points, and certainly things that I've done in the past, things that I've been involved with in the past. Uh, My position right now is that the Republican Party has to earn my support. It has done nothing to do so. And so, you know, John, I guess my question to you is how does an individual citizen, how does an individual activist express their displeasure and influence a party that could care less about what we have to say if we don't just say enough's enough? Well, I think the way you do it is you get behind a candidate like Tony Sanchez. The, 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 the establishment believes that people like Tony can't win. If we get behind people like Tony Sanchez and Laura Woods and Tim Neville, and if we get those people elected, we'll show the party that, yes, that the most electable people are constitutional conservatives. To me, I'm not a Republican because it has an R by it. I'm a Republican because that's the best vehicle that I have to help get constitutional conservatives elected. So get behind a candidate that you believe in, you believe in his or her principles, reflects your values, has character, knows how to communicate our conservative values, is able to do it with a winsome tone, is able to reach out to libertarian-minded folks, and is able to uh, truly reflect constitutional conservative principles, is able to reach out to the more traditional Republicans and get them to see that, that our principles are really the winning principles. So get behind a candidate you believe in and show that we, we can win and we will win, and that will send a huge message to the party. John, good stuff as always. I really appreciate it. This conversation will continue today at noon, live in studio. I'll join Ken Clark for his great new show, Freedom 560. John Rush comes up after that with Rush to Reason. John is dead to me now. Uh, that's a topic for another day. But uh, I'll tell you what, a lot of people are following my lead. Uh, I'm getting Twitter feed uh, messages and phone messages about people leaving the Republican Party right now. We're too dissatisfied to stick around. You've been listening to the podcast of Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. You can access these podcasts anytime at soundcloud.com forward slash Randy Corcoran or at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Wake Up KLZ. Please show your support by giving us a like and a follow and leave any comments and or feedback you may have. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, please send us your name, a short bio, and the best way we can get back to you. Thanks again for listening to the podcast of Wake Up with Randy Corcoran.